Hello, an air hug if you want. Don't want to break social distancing. <laughs> That's just my uh, New York sarcasm. <laughs> Still have a little bit of that left. Just want to ask that you would uh, please go on to the live stream and uh, that you would share that with everybody, please, brothers and sisters. I want to thank everybody for working so hard on uh, the live stream and uh, also on the uh, ushering and the greeting and everything else that everybody does. It takes a, a whole body working together to accomplish the service. Uh, on Sunday, August, Saturday, August 29th, I just want to make mention that uh, to everybody that we are going to be going to the beach. Praise God. How many of you like the beach? Woo! Awesome, awesome. Well, there's a lot of other people that like the beach, and we're going to go there. We're going to give them water bottles, and we're going to be a blessing to the people in the community. So if you're interested, uh, this is my suggestion, though. You don't have to, but it's going to make it easier to get parking. Uh, we have a bus that's going to be meeting here at the church, so if you would just let Pastor Jeannie know how many people are going to be going, I'm going to be added onto that list, uh, if you guys would. Uh, we want to make sure, because there's only 22 seats, I think, on the bus, so 22 seats, so uh, sign up early. Actually, there was a lot of people that went last time. We're also going to be doing a water baptism at the beach, too, as well. How many of you feel that it's okay to have a public display of who we are as Christians? Amen. 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 You guys. That's right. I love, that's what I love about you guys. You are who you are everywhere that you go. We also are going to be having a women's meeting that day. So ladies are going to be doing something really important too. And I want to encourage the ladies to be a part of that prayer meeting. Uh, if you want to be a part of the women's ministry or if you want to pray for other women. And it's also a great time to invite other ladies to get to know one another. During corporate gathering. Sometimes it's difficult. That's why life groups are so important. That's why the women's ministry is so important. They're going to be meeting also on August 29th at 10 a.m. Also, the ministry school has been doing a great job. Uh, we, and the people that are a part of the ministry school have been just learning and growing and sharing some wonderful testimonies. We have some new classes that are going to be beginning. Uh, new creation realities, which is going to help us to know who we are in Christ. Uh, learn about what God says about us and uh, who we are and uh, who He is uh, so that we can appropriate the inheritance that He has given to us. Uh, we also have a spiritual gifts class that we're going to learn a little bit more about the, the spiritual gifts. And, you know, people have different opinions, but we want to see what the Word says about the spiritual gifts so that we can add our faith to that and we can start to begin to operate in some of those spiritual gifts. Amen? Amen. Or continue and grow in those uh, spiritual gifts. My wife has it at the back. Uh, she has, I'm super proud of my wife. She worked really hard on this. She, uh, my wife is an amazing communicator, uh, especially as a writer. Uh, in my opinion, uh, she's uh, an amazing uh, preacher. I love, she's my fa favorite preacher, in fact. And uh, she wrote a book just recently, and that's uh, on sale at the back. So if you're interested in that, just stop on the back. And that's also going to be, be given away, uh, I think, on the 29th. So don't hold me to any of that. Please see Nancy in the back. Or well, my wife, Jill, if you want some more information about that. I know you're all ready to praise the Lord, so let's get to it. Father, we thank you, Lord. We came here to praise you, Lord, to worship you, to glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you love public displays of affection, Lord. So, Father, that in this house, Lord, we're free to raise a banner. We're free to raise a shout, to, to worship you, to glorify you, Lord, to dance, to clap. Uh, Lord, to raise our hands, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord, that there is not a, part, uh, a spectator in this house, Lord, that we're all participants with the worship, Lord. And, Father, that you would continue, Lord, to activate, Lord, the heavenlies above us, Lord, as we worship you and we glorify you, Lord. I declare an open heaven over this place, Lord, and that you would rain down, Lord, upon your people, Lord. Rain down spiritual blessings. Rain down, Lord, new life and new strength, Lord. Revitalize them, Lord, like only you can, Lord, and cause them to, Lord, uh, Father, operate in supernatural joy and peace, Lord, to receive your love, Lord. Let your love this morning be sensed and felt by every born-again, blood-bought child of the Most High God. For those people, Lord, that might not know you, Lord, that they would sense your love and that they would come out of darkness and into your wondrous light. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's stand, let's worship. Hallelujah.
I was thinking of a scripture that I wanted to say and I read this scripture and I said wow what if we could do this at Integrity House and it's Exodus 35 21 and 22 and they came everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many who were willing and had a willing heart and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. You know, when you read these verses, these people saw the need. And they came, not because they were from a certain family or a certain tribe. They came with a willing heart. It's all that God wants is a willing heart from us. And we see in these scriptures that the Spirit just moved these people. And we see what happened. And they brought them willingly and voluntarily. All spiritual things begin in our heart. That includes our desire to willingly give our tithes and offerings. To be joyful, have a joyful heart when we do it. Not to do it grudgingly, not to do it because we're supposed to. Because we have a joy in our heart that we want to be able to do what God wants us to do. And the Bible tells us that the people gave of their possessions enthusiastically to the point that they had to be restrained from giving. 36.6 says, So Moses gave a commandment, 
and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, neither man nor woman do any more work, can you imagine, for this offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. My prayer today is for all of us to have that same desire to willingly give and do voluntarily and with a joyful heart so that Integrity Church will be able to fulfill all the plans God has for them. And I look forward to the day when Pastor Rob is going to come up here and say, enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> so when you're ready, let's joyfully bring our tithes and offerings. you will bless each giver and put a desire in our hearts to give for all a manner of work that needs to be done here at Integrity Church so that we can complete the plans you have for us. Amen. Wow. What a time of worship. All right, I'm going to try and continue on because uh, I feel drunk in the spirit. <laughs> How many of you can liken to that? Yes. Uh, let's give it a little guy. Give him a praise. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you, Lord. Just want to thank you all for being the wonderful testimonies that you are. Jill and I were thinking this past week about some of the things that were going on and uh, brought tears to our eyes. Honestly, some of the breakthroughs that some of you were experiencing and some of the things that uh, we were sharing testimony of how the Lord was moving in people's lives and uh, just messed me up, you know, just messed Jill up. We were, we were just, just so in awe of how good God is. And uh, we both were saying, that's, that's what we live for. We live to see God move in your lives and the lives of the people that you know. And uh, I want to thank you for being a tremendous encouragement because to, to Jill and to I and to the other pastors because your hearts are open to receive the word. Uh, you're welcoming the word. You're growing in the Lord. And we're seeing work uh, being accomplished and we're seeing lives being touched, seeing families be changed. And uh, that's just a privilege to see. Before we get into the message, I, I do want to point out a few things to you so that um, one was just a little bit of what we went over at the 830 service last week. You know, while sickness and infirmity may surround us, it doesn't always have to affect us. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, it says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. But they, that scripture is saying, and I want, to, I want to encourage you, and the Lord really wants to encourage you, and it's been a, a strategy that's been given to us even before COVID was around, before sickness and infirmity was around. When we pray in the Spirit, what we do is we edify our, ourselves. We build up, and the word edify comes from the word edifice, or we get that word edifice. And what that, mean, that word edifice means is massive, magnificent structure. That's when, when you pray in the Spirit, that's when you become a massive, magnificent structure. So that when the, the, the wind and the waves come, that we'll, that we'll have not only be founded upon the rock, but we'll also be strengthened in our inner man, as it says in Jude chapter 20. It says, but beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're using that spiritual gift. And I want to encourage you because I believe some of the things that God wants to do in this next season, we're going to need... Him even more than we did in the last season. 
How many of you can like sense that in your spirit? It's like, that, that you're going to need a, a greater faith, that you're going to need to be more equipped than yesterday because tomorrow has even greater things. Not, not just challenges, but God wants to build us up so that we can handle the next level of blessing that He wants to pour out onto our lives. Not just to be blessed, because there's a purpose. There's a purpose for our lives. You're significant in these end time plans. You have to know that. Everything that you do is important because your life is going to touch other people's lives and there's a chain reaction and a domino effect that's going to take place. This morning, uh, we also went over the power uh, of an example. You know, living out our lives is an example to the people that are around us because people are watching. You know, they're watching your life, they're watching my life and uh, we don't have to be perfect, but as we're working towards perfection, we're leading people closer to Christ. And you're doing a great job, but, but there are other people that are watching. You know, and, and sometimes people make it like a Christian to be perfect. Christians aren't perfect. You know, the only perfect one to ever walk the face of the earth is Jesus. All, all of us, we're, we're, we're working, He's working us towards perfection. So you don't have to be perfect before God uses you. You just have to be available. Available to God and allow Him to. Uh, I did, I'm going to ask Derek to come up because I wanted to point out something. That, don't worry, Derek, I didn't prepare you. But I, I just want you to know, Derek is one of our interns. and Derek, Give him a hand. <laughs> See, this young man has come to the church and he's been a great servant. And he is a great servant. He's got a tremendous heart. And uh, he's part of our in the internship program, and he's going to the School of Ministry. But uh, there's, I mean, he's, to me, he's an amazing miracle. Uh, the reason why is because he was a Jehovah's Witness for how many years? 22. 22 years he was a Jehovah's Witness, and he stepped out of that darkness and into the kingdom of God. And he's watching our example, and he's following after, and there's a lot of different, there's a lot of things that are, foreign to him. He's come, and he doesn't mind me sharing some of these things, you know, because he's watching our example. He's, he said that he's watching our example. He's looking for some of those things. So, and what is, what is coming to Christ cost you? My life, my family, my old life. Let me put it that way. This is life. Amen. But I lost communication with my entire family. Um, I have ostracized, um, even betrayed. But I have found a family and a life in God that I never knew existed. And thank you, Jesus. You're an actual live participant in my life every single day. I just, I just want to spend as much time making up for lost time as I can. So thank you. Pray for Derek. And we're being led by the Spirit this morning. There's so many great testimonies in this in this church and all the people's lives. Are. So Father, we lift up Derek to you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for Lord being the God that leaves the ninety-nine for the one. We thank you, Lord, that you delivered him from darkness and that you brought him into your wondrous light. We thank you for his life and for his for what you're doing in his life, Lord, and that. Father, we would be examples to him. Amen. Lord, that as we follow Christ, he'll follow us. Lord, just like the Apostle Paul said, imitate us as we follow you, Lord. So we thank you, Father, for your hand of blessing upon his life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the amazing work that he's doing. We thank you, Lord, that you comfort him, Lord, and for the sacrifice that he's making to follow you, Lord. Father, that the blessings that, that you have for him pale in comparison. Your, your word says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things that you have prepared for those that love you. And we thank you that Derek loves you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Pastor Derek. Thank you. You know, there's so much that's going on. Uh, it's, it's hard to. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get better at sharing some of those things. I want to get into the Word this morning. And I, I, uh, this song, The Blessing, is really an important song. Because what... What the Lord has really been bringing to my heart is, what are you fighting for? Now, sometimes people say it's not a fight. 
It is a fight. The continuing, the, 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 the victory has been given to us. You know, it, it, I know Jesus said it is finished, but he also said to finish the work that he sent us to do. You know, we, we, I like in the church, the true church, true disciples, to disciples of Jesus, to, to, to spiritual special forces that have been dropped behind enemy lines, because this is not your home. You know, it's, it's like the Navy SEALs. They're, this is, that's not their home. The Lord gave me a vision many years ago about uh, the church. The church was like a group of Navy SEALs that went to a POW camp and to set the captives free. But uh, what was going on in this vision that the Lord gave to me is that the, this particular unit came outside of the POW camp and then they started to like just make camp. But it started to become about their camp. They started to build a house and a structure and then an air conditioning and all of the different things. And I said, I said, what's going on in this vision that you've given to me, Lord? And he said, that's, like the, that's almost like where the church is today. And I don't want them to be there, be there because you know what? They weren't sent to the POW camp to get comfortable. They were sent to set the captives free. There's a mission that's been given to you and to I. That we're to go into all the world and we're to proclaim the truth to people. Because you know what? There are people that are lost. Eternity hangs in the balance for them. They need to hear the gospel. Uh, they need to hear the truth. I also believe, and it's burning in my heart, that, that, that it's not just the people that are lost. It's also a generation that's coming up. That we got to transfer our faith to the next generation so that they can run. And this is the goal for us as spiritual parents and natural parents. That they're not sh as strong as us. They're not as good as us. I know it's your heart that your your you're natural children and also spiritual parents that you're Spiritual children are not as good as you. You want them to be better than you. And that's what the Lord is wanting to appropriate. That's, so he was asking me, what are we fighting for? This is what we're fighting for. We're fighting for our families. We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for our children's children. We're fighting for our nation. We're fighting for people who can't fight for themselves. There's not a one of us in this sanctuary that would allow somebody to go suffer or to, to be in a, a harmful situation if we knew about it. But there are, there are people all around us. And sometimes people are like, well, Rob, you know what? You can't help everybody. And I know that's not true. But if I can change the world, or if you can change the world, and we can change the world for a few, my God, then let's do it. Let's change the world for the people that are within our sphere of influence. Let's stand up and be a voice for those people that aren't. And you know what? This is, a, this is what amazes me about this church. In this church, there's so many gifted and talented and anointed people. I look back and I'm like, oh my God. You know what? And the Lord said to me, I was like, Lord, why did you send so many gifted and anointed people? People that are so strong in their areas of influence. And God said, because you're not intimidated by that. You're like a David. David was surrounded by people that were stronger than him. In their area of gifting. We have architects. The, the man doing the sounds is an architect. Skilled and gifted. There's, there's builders. There's architects. There's preachers that have been serving for decades. There's people that have been spiritual mothers. Natural fathers. Spiritual fathers. You know, I, the only thing that we were missing years ago is I said, Lord, you know, the only person you didn't send is a lawyer. <laughs> and now the Lord sent a lawyer. <laughs> I was like, Lord, you know me, you know, if you tell me to do something, I'm going to go and do it. Sometimes that might lead to a little bit of trouble, so you've got to send us a, a lawyer to be prepared for some of those things. But now, even now, he brings the whole full arsenal prepared as the body of Christ to go and do a great work. It's hard to look around this sanctuary as doctors and nurses and all the lawyers and all the different people that are a part of this church and people that have been so faithful. Because it's not just about the vocation, it's about being faithful unto the Lord. Man, we have such faithful people in this body, and that's why such great work has been accomplished. It's hard to look around and see the character of Christ and all the people that are here and not see something amazing taking place. It's hard to not see God promoting us, even more so as a ministry. So what I want to speak to you about this morning is really in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Because only God knows how far-reaching our actions are and the decisions and the impact of our decisions we make. There are some decisions that I've made, and let's be honest, there's some decisions that you've made, you're like, wow, I didn't know how far-reaching the impact of that one decision was going to be. 
you know, some people have made a decision, and it, one decision, just one decision, just sent a chain reaction and a, a domino effect into action. Family, we are called to be catalysts. You know, and that, that's the name of Pastor Junior and Smitty's ministry into the prison, but we're called to be catalysts. One of the reasons why they came to this ministry because there was a confirmation because that's the heart of this ministry is to be a catalyst, to be a change agent. And I want to encourage you, you're not meant to fit into this world. You're meant to stand out. You're called to be peculiar, it says in First Peter. It says we're called to be peculiar, to stand out, to be different. That's your destiny, not to be a chameleon to fit in, but to stand out like a sore thumb so that people would see the light inside of us. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can hope, ask, or imagine. This is the God that we serve. God wants to do miracles in your lives. He wants us to walk in blessing, and He wants us to walk in favor. And it's not for things. I know that I'm speaking, because things don't get us at this church. It's not about things, but what it is, it, it, it is about, it is about souls it is about people recognizing that there's a difference upon your life. That God meets your needs supernaturally. That He's a good Father and He takes care of you during difficulty. See, because that becomes a testimony to people. That they become uh, zealous and jealous for what you have in the Lord. In your relationship with Him. Having peace, even in this time where everybody's walking around filled with anxiety. There's a difference that God, the God of Shalom is imparting into us peace. That's why it's important for us. To pray in the Spirit, to be filled, and to have our spiritual gifts active. Because, you know, people are watching. And it's not just because they're watching. It's because so that we can relay and transfer to them the greatest message that's ever been told. Our God, my God, your God, He stepped off the cross. I mean, He's not on the cross any longer. In fact, it says in Revelation, your God, my God, our God, took hell, death, and the grave, and then He tossed them into the fire. The, the end outcome of this thing is victory. The end outcome of our lives is victory. It's over, it is finished, but now we have to continue to stand and continue to believe and to continue to trust because that God is a God that will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can hope, ask, or imagine. I tell you this, is that your standing is going to not just affect your life, but it's going to affect the next generation yeah. and the generations to come. See, because when I... And this is, I think about this, is I think, you know what, I'm not going to be moved from my place, my appointed place. I'm not going to be moved by the devil. The only thing that's going to move me is the Holy Spirit. There is no spirit that's going to move me. And that should be the, the declaration of every born again, blood born child of the Most High God. You're not going to be moved by any spirit, but by the Spirit of God. Because the consequences, because we're playing for high stakes here. We don't understand fully the end, but God sees the end from the beginning. And He knows how important your life is. To the people that are around you. That this, this, there's generations at stake. And there's, there are people that are following after. And we see that. God set generational blessings in place. So that as you stand. That he would bless the next generation. And the next generation. And the generation after that. So it says. That this is. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want to talk to you about a woman who was barren. She was barren. She, didn't have, she wasn't able to have children. She was looked down upon by the other women. Because at, at, at the time, a woman was part of her uh, influence or value. Thank you, whoever said that, value. Her value was found in being able to have children. So Hannah wasn't able to have children. So she was in this place of difficulty and she, she, was, she wanted and she desired a child. And it says in the scriptures that she was weeping bitterly, sorely. And she, she was weeping herself sore. It's almost like the point, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you've been in just such a pain, place of pain and difficulty where you've wept and it's almost like a muscles ache. The other day I was actually uh, in the opposite. I was laughing so hard I left the, the, the couple. I was like my muscles were aching. It was, thank you for adding to my life because my very heart doing good like medicine. But she was in this place of difficulty where she needed God to move. And what she prayed for is she went into the temple and she was praying and praying and praying. And just so much so that she was asking God and she was making requests of God so much. And you know, it could, I'm sure a lot of people tried to talk her out of it. 
Oh, you know what? You need to just settle in and just be okay with it. And, you know, even her husband, Elkanah, he had said to her, I give you a double portion. I take care of you. Isn't my love enough for you? But there was something inside of her. She was believing for more. And you know what? I want you to know it's okay for you to believe for more. It's okay for you to believe for more for your children. It's okay for you to believe for more for your children's children. We pray, my wife and I pray for our, our children's wives. It's okay to believe for those things. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to transfer a spiritual blessing to everybody that's around us. So, so when we stand and we trust, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. So she was in this place where she's going before the Lord. And, and the Lord shows up. I mean, because that's just what he does. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21, this woman who was probably ridiculed and persecuted and her hopes. And she had there was a dead vision that she had had. There's somebody in here, too, that fell out, too. There's somebody that has a vision that kind of like they let go. Uh, I, want, I, want that, I want to pray into that. If there's anybody that has a vision that they feel like has died or they have to give up on, we're just going to take a quick moment to pray over that. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would, as the, the, the God of the resurrection, Lord, resurrect, Lord, new hope. Uh, Father, that you would replace that vision, Lord, and rekindle it, Lord, and that you would cause it to come alive. Uh, Lord, with new hope and new faith, Lord. And that, that, that whoever that is, Lord, would appropriate it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So she prays, and she, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21, it says, And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare, oh, this is, I jumped ahead. She, she bare three sons and two daughters. The child Samuel grew before the Lord. So let me catch you up. She prays, and God gives her a son. She prayed and she said a prayer. She said, God, if you give me a son, I'm going to dedicate this son to you. His name's Samuel means God heard. That's what his name means. So she was asking and then God heard and answered her prayer. He gave her a son, Samuel. Now this is what the amazing thing about Samuel is. Samuel uh, was a very anointed man. Not only did Samuel become a priest and one of the, most, and one of the first judges, but he also anointed Saul and David. So this woman was very pivotal in history because we see all of Israel being influenced by her decision to go and to pray and to believe. And that's how big God is. Everything that we do matters. Amen. That was a revelation that the Lord brought to me. So she gets her, she gets the child, Samuel. She, and this is the difference, and this is for someone here too. There's something that God, you're asking God for and you're going to get it. But this is where you got to be different. When you get it, you got to remember the Lord in it. Because there's a lot of people that get what God is going to give to them. Because you know what? He, that's the faithfulness of God, but he doesn't repent of his gifts. This is the important part, is that when we get the, what we've been praying for, that we be faithful with it. See, she brought the, her son Samuel back to the priesthood, and she, she dedicated him unto the Lord. So he went and he served, because God had a plan for his life. So he went and he anointed the two kings and he was uh, he became one of the judges and but this is in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 21 she prayed for only one child. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 21 that she then later received three more sons and on top of that two daughters. And this is what going back to is God's going to do above and beyond and that's what uh, I really feel in, in my spirit. And that's the title uh, that we're, of the, or the framework or the main topic of what the Lord is really wanting to frame inside of us. Because we went, He had us go over the heart condition to prepare us for this next season, which He wants us to have above and beyond. And for a purpose, so that His kingdom can be advanced here on the face, the face of the earth. So what did Hannah do? How did she appropriate this special, uh, this special bond? How did she appropriate... the? The, the son Samuel, how did she appropriate these things? She asked the Lord. She prayed. So that's important for us to know because she wasn't moved by man's opinion because I'm sure, I can tell you, because I know people. They, there were people that tried to talk Hannah out of believing for more. I know because people did it to me. I remember years ago, somebody was saying to me, my expectations of a wife were too high. I remember praying and praying, and they were like, I shared my prayer list, and they said, you know what? A woman like that doesn't exist. <laughs> There's a lot of women that, like, you know, that, but you know what? 
she's right here. Amen. Every, everything that I pray for, God was faithful to give me and my wife. God gave me exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could hope, ask, or imagine. And then my children. And, and that's what the Lord is. And this is, this is what is just ringing on my heart. What are we fighting for? Yeah. That's right. We're fighting for our families. Yeah. We're fighting for the generations to come. We're fighting right now to, to make sure because things are hanging in the balance. And you know what? You're called as an overcomer, as a conqueror. You're called to take this territory. You're called to be a Hannah, to stand and to ask God for something that's crazy and ridiculous. And he's going to move on your behalf. And then as you're faithful with it, he's going to exceed that expectation. Even if, it just, even if it's just our families that hang in the balance, isn't that enough? Yes. Isn't that? But he's going to do more than that. He's going to do even more. We see another man that was very faithful. And I'm going to get, be getting into him. But let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Some of us have, been go have gone through some stuff. You know, it hasn't been... Uh, like a, like a friend of mine says, Sean Mazzola, I love that guy. He said, not everything is, all the time is unicorns and rainbows. You know, right? it's not. Sometimes there's been pain. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, it says, God is not unrighteous. And this is what I want to say to you this morning. There's a purpose for your pain. There's a purpose for what you went through. I want to ask you, I want to plead with you not to waste your pain. Not to waste what you went through because there's a purpose for it. And sometimes the purpose is to give us a passion in the area that God delivered us. He brought comfort to us. So it says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards His name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. I want to tell you this morning that God, my God, is not going to forget everything that you did for His children. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42, it says that you can't even give one of his children a cup of water without him in some way blessing you in return. There are great things. And you know what? Go and get them and appropriate them. Because I shared with you last week, if I died for somebody and they only claimed half the blessing, when they got to heaven, I'd be upset with them. Don't let Jesus be upset with you. Go and get everything that he paid and purchased with his blood for. Walk in the power and authority. Claim your families. There are prodigals that are coming in. There are destinies that are meant to be fulfilled. That God is placing his hand on families. I feel right now even callings being placed on people. As we stand, we don't know because they're watching. And it says in the scriptures that a righteous man or a righteous woman will leave an inheritance for their children's children. Amen. When we sing that song, the blessing, that's what it's about. The ironic priesthood praying a blessing over their family, praying a blessing over their people, praying a blessing over their tribe. Knowing that God, this is the scripture verse. God says in his word, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. That's you, family. Do you love the Lord? Yes. If you love the Lord, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor entered into the heart the things that God has prepared. So he, in that scripture verse in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, He will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can hope, ask, or imagine. Can you imagine some big things? Yes. I know, I know. I'll be honest with you, I can sometimes let my mind go crazy. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Imagine these great things. Well, you know what? The, I, I take great comfort in that because God's going to do bigger than that. He already has. When I came into ministry, I said, Lord, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to serving you. All I want to do is make a difference in one person's life. One person. And God was faithful to that. I, was, I, I feel like that he, he's been exceedingly and abundantly faithful to that. And he'll do that for you too. He'll cause, I mean, that's what, that's what it's really all about. No matter how much you have in this natural world, everybody just enjoys a meal. There's certain things that are common to us all. We want to make an impact. We want to make it, and this is what the Lord has given us that ability. So I want to encourage you, continue. Dispel the lies of the enemy. Sometimes the enemy makes us feel like, well, I made a mistake, so therefore I am a mistake. No, you're not a mistake. I said this this morning at the 8.30 service. If you're doing everything perfectly, guess what? You're not doing enough. You should be doing more. Because the way that you learn is you make some mistakes. You know, if you're up there, and I, I didn't notice any mistakes, so I'm going to be careful. Let's say you're singing and you make a mistake, so what? Keep going. 
It'll continue to keep growing. If you're delivering the gospel or you're outside, there are some people that never go and do anything because they, they're waiting to do it perfectly. Just go and do it. Jesus didn't say wait to be perfect and then go preach the gospel. He said go. Just go. Just go do it. Just get involved. Start doing something. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says this. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. There's an enemy that we have. He doesn't want you to have those blessings. He doesn't want the change and the transformation to take place. But this is what I say to the devil. I don't really care what you want. <laughs> and sometimes we got to say it. Some people are so impressed with the devil. Who cares what he wants? He's a defeated foe. Hey, well, forget about what he's saying. Let's focus in on what he's saying. So he can lead us and guide us in the right. Here's what the king says about you. He says that greater is he that lives inside of you than he that lives inside of this world. So you, you might be wondering, can I do this? Well, and we all wonder that. Well, yeah, because the risen one lives inside of you. Can you go to a college or can you go and be a pastor or can you go in? There was a lot of things that I'm like, oh my God, I can't do that. But then, you know, this is what I've learned. Forget about all of that stuff. Forget about all those disempowering thoughts. Just go and do it. Just start to step through. Sometimes we wonder if we're worthy. I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but nobody's worthy. <laughs> nobody's worthy of what God gives to them. That's why the, His grace is so special. It's so wonderful because He gives it to us because He's good. Not because we're good and we measure up. Nobody's kept out of heaven because they're so bad and nobody gets into heaven because they're so good here on the face of the earth. You know why you get in? You get in because He's good and you receive the free gift. And that's exact, that's all it is. It's very simplistic because there's a man that came to the face of the earth. His name is Jesus, fully God, fully man, and he died. Why? Because we would need his grace. Amen. He came to deliver grace and truth. None of us will ever be so perfect that we'll measure up here on the face of the earth. So in, in John chapter 10, it says this. And these are some words that I've highlighted. Have. That's a simple word. That they might have life. What does have mean? It means own. It means possess. It means experience it. That's what I pray for us all. Me included. We're all, all of us. Is that we would experience His life here. That we would sense God. That we would feel Him. That He would become... I mean, He is real, but we've got to sense the reality of Him in our hearts. That we would have this experience abundantly. And this is what abundantly means. Not ordinary... Not ordinarily encountered, exceptional, extraordinary, remarkable, superfluous, special advantage, unnecessary, marked by great quantity or degree. That's you. That's what he wants for you. He doesn't want you to be mediocre, mundane, average, or ordinary. He's called you to be extraordinary. And he's already given you everything that you need. He's given us everything that we need to possess this life. And this is what life is. There's two words in the Greek for life. And I studied this out so much because I, wanted, I, wanna, I want us all to have the life that God came to, and sent his son to die so that we can have. Life is not bios, which is a natural life. He wants us to have Zoe, the God kind of life. He wants you to walk like he walked here on the face of the earth. Sometimes people are like, well, I'm not Jesus. You know what? It says in my Bible... In John chapter 14, verse 12, that not only will you do the works that Jesus did, but what does it say? Greater. Greater works. Yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the, what we want to hold the Lord to. That's what we want to believe Him for. Not greater works in you. Greater works in your children. Greater works in your children's children. Greater works around you. There's another man that was kind of, you know, just had the right heart. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Solomon. We might not get it fully into Solomon. But Solomon was David's son. David was David positioned Solomon to be the king on the throne. Why? Because of David's faithfulness. It says in the scripture that because of David's faithfulness to the Lord, there was a covenant that was made with him. And go to the uh, Pastor Dwight's class about covenants if you want to learn about the Davidic covenant. But there was a special covenant that was made with David that said that David would always have a family member on the throne because of his faithfulness to God. There are actions that you are going to take, and I want to plead with you. 
in the moment of truth, at, at, at that crossroads, that you would listen to the Holy Spirit and you make the decision that's going to impact generations to come. That God is going to lead you and direct you. Because in Solomon's situation, he was placed as the king of Israel. And this is what Solomon's heart was. And I love Solomon's heart. Solomon, all he asked for was this. He didn't ask for riches and gold, I'm told. What he, had, he didn't ask to be the most popular guy. He didn't ask, you know what he asked for? He, he asked for wisdom. He asked for discernment to guide his people. And this is what God said. Because he asked for that out of a pure heart. I tell you this. I know this about my God. My God can't resist people with a pure heart, with no agenda. I mean, when he knows he can trust you, and your heart is right, he just throws it on you. He just he just, he just lavishes it upon you. How do I know that I've experienced that? How do I know that you've experienced it? You've experienced his lavish love as, as you've had a pure heart. Well, Solomon's there and he says, I just want to do the right thing before you, Lord. And this is what God does for him. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, he says, Give therefore thy servant, this is Solomon, an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this, thy people, so great a people. And this is what God gives him. In the later verses, he gives him riches and honor. Solomon didn't ask for that. There are some things that God's going to give to you that you didn't ask for. And, that, and there's a reason why. I feel this in my spirit, that some people are going to be blessed with great wealth in this church. The reason why is it doesn't hold you. But, and, and because it doesn't hold you, you'll use it the way that he wants you to use it. There are some people that are going to be blessed with great authority, but they're not, it's not about them. They're going to use and exercise that authority so that other people can be benefited. That's why God is going to give it to you. It's, it's interesting how God gives to people a lot of the things that they don't want. He asked for wisdom and discernment, and God blessed them with these things. The second one is this. He distinguished him above all the other kings. There is significance and there's honor. I hear that in my spirit. There are some people that haven't been honored the way that they should have, even in their own families. But there's going to be a restoration. There's going to be a reconciliation. It could be with a brother or a sister. Or it could be with a father or a mother. Or it could be your children. There's an honor that's going to be given to you because people are going to finally recognize what a blessing and a gift that you are. Because your father is working those things out. The third one that he gets is a long life. I know some of you are like, man, I just want to get off this train. I want to get off. I want to say this to you. Hey, you're not leaving us behind. You're not leaving us stuck with this bag. But there's a long life that he's going to give to us. And it's not, not just a long life, but I pray this for you all the time. A happy, joyful, spiritually prosperous life. Filled with adventure as God does these wonderful things. This season, family, we saw it in Hannah's life. We saw it in Solomon's life. Can you grab a hold of that? That God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can hope, ask, or imagine. He may need to restore things. He may need to restore the years that the locust and the canker worm ate. He, I don't know fully exactly what he's going to do, but I can tell you this. God will do above and beyond your imagination. Set your mind and your heart to receive everything that he has for you. Open your heart and your mind to the word of God. Let that be the plumb line. Let that be the guiding line. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you so much truth that every lie and deception is dispelled. In, first, in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12, I'll just read to you this last scripture verse. This is what was granted to Solomon so that I can prove what I just said to you. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto you. This is the Lord speaking to Solomon. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor. I'm not speaking prosperity gospel. But you know what? God wants a prosperous people. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're faithful with a little, then God will give you more. It's just the bottom line. Such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee. Neither shall there any that have the like of, or after thee the like of. So what that says is that no other king was like Solomon after that. This morning, family, I want to ask you, as the worship team comes forward, I know exactly what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for my family, 
I'm fighting for the inheritance that Jesus died for. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for your family. I'm fighting for this territory. I'm fighting to make sure that every person within my sphere of influence goes to be with the Father. In 120 years, I want to be thanking God that I was faithful here on the face of the earth, and I know you do too as well. That, they, that you're meant for a life of significance. Some of you are called, I hear it, some of you are called to be a pastor. Some of you are called to, uh, to be people of great significance in these end times. Some of you, God is called to, to be apostles and prophets and teachers. Some of you are called, and, and he's, he's placing that upon you. And I want to encourage you to exercise the gift that God has given to you. Don't disqualify yourself by trying to reason things out. Just follow his voice. Know what you're fighting for this morning. You're also... Fighting for people who can't fight for themselves. I can't tell you how many times this ministry has come across people that didn't have a voice. That they needed somebody else to stand up for them. And there's a whole bunch more. We need your help. We need the body of Christ to be fully active. This morning, who is it that says, I know what I'm fighting for. And you're also going to put the devil in his place. You get, don't worry, you don't have to do it in your own strength. Because I was like, man, I don't want to. Your Lord, your Savior, your God has already defeated the enemy. He's fighting for you on your behalf. If you know what you're fighting for now after this message, I want to ask you to come to the altar. Let's worship. Let's sing the blessing. Let's lay claim to a blessing that's so big. And here it is. So big, you can't contain it. That's what it says in Malachi. And here, I'm just, I'm just a nobody. And I'm cool with that. I want to be a nobody for the rest of my life. A nobody that tells everybody about somebody. That's why I love that song. Because he's the, he's the way maker. He's the one who will answer all your prayers and promises. We're saying follow us as we follow him. Grab a hold of the blessing that the Lord has for you. Grab a hold of the blessing that the Lord has for your family. Grab a hold of the, the calling and the destiny that have, He has on your life. He did it for Hannah. He did it for Solomon. God's no respecter of persons. He'll do it for you. Let's worship. Let's sing that song, The Blessing.
Father, thank you. Thank you for people willing to seek you, to trust you, to stand and stand some more. Thank you, Lord, for people willing to speak up for other people that don't have a voice, to help those that are weak. Lord, the, the purpose that you gave to us, Lord, is not to accumulate a bunch of things, but to seek and save the lost. That was the mission that you gave to the church. To declare the good news. Yes, Lord, the message of the cross sounds like foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us, it's the power of God. It's the gospel. As we stand here, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the strength to stand and stand some more, to appropriate the promises that you have made, Lord, that our lives would affect the people around us, that you would use us as a catalyst to bring change and transformation, to help other people know how loved that they are in this world, Lord, that people have become disposable Lord that they would know how valuable that they are to you to us Lord I thank you Lord as my brothers and my sisters and those that are live streaming Lord and even those that Lord are in their seat Father as we stand in our hearts we appropriate all that you have for us for our children for our children's children. I declare over my brothers and my sisters, Lord, that prodigals will find their way home on fire for you. Lord, I thank you that brother, my brothers and sisters seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Lord, that strong marriages, strong families, reconciliations would happen, deliverances and healings, Lord, would take place. Lord, we don't know fully, but we do trust you in the end outcome. We trust you, Lord. We thank you that your plans will be fulfilled in our lives, in our children's lives, in our children's children's lives. We know what we're fighting for, Lord, what we're standing for. We know that we don't have to do it in our strength in our, or in our wisdom but in the strength and wisdom that you provide. And that you'll do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can hope, ask, or imagine. Yes. God, let's sing that again. Let that sink into your spirit. Let it saturate.
Praise God. Man. Before you leave the altar, I want you to tell five people that you and your family are worth it. You and your family are worth it. God bless you all. Jesus loves you guys. You and your family are worth it. That's what the Lord says. That's what we say. Say it to one another. Let's affirm one another what God's promises are. Jesus.